All right. Good evening and welcome to the planning and zoning meeting for February the 1st, 2024. First order of business tonight will be public hearing, uh, amendment to section 405.390 site plan process. Mr. Burks. Yeah. <clears throat> the section 405.390 site plan process and 405, uh, 400 application and review fees, admin 135. Uh, basically, this project or this amendment is going to remove the site plan process and the fee, or the public hearing process and the fee for the site plan process. Okay. Any questions? Want to have any questions right now? Anyone want to speak on behalf of that tonight? Hearing none, we'll close that public hearing and open up our next public hearing, which is the Shield Maiden Coffee House Site Plan, SP-166. Mr. Burks. All right. Uh, Bart Carmen of Lewis and Beatty Surveying Engineering on behalf of Sarah Dutton has submitted an application for a site plan approval for a proposed coffee and tea house located on the west side of Highway 47 and in north of Bruni Parkway. Uh, the site plan shows the construction of a proposed 3,360 square foot restaurant uh, coffee shop and tea room with a 1,624 square foot partial basement and drive through uh, The subject site is Zone C3 Highway Commercial and the surrounding is surrounded by properties of the same zoning classification. Assets to the <coughs> proposed site will be from Bruni Parkway on the south side of the property and parking is provided on both the east and north side of the proposed building. This project uh, is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, all the site plan uh, requirements have been met with this project. Uh, staff has reviewed and proposed conditional use site plan plat and found that the proposal is consistent with Chapter 410 Subdivision Regulation of Warrington Municipal Code. Um, there was one uh, requirement that uh, ensured the fixture Locate our lighting fixtures located on the east side of the property does not cause a glare to create a nuisance to the parcels to the west. Okay. Bart Karma is supposed to be here for this. Uh, the applicant is here. Uh, do you have any questions for me on this one? Anyone have any questions for Mr. Burks? We'll open it up to anyone else that would like to speak at this time. Just for. <clears throat> State your name, sir, at the podium. My name is John Mark Score. I live at 27463 Forest Ridge Court. Sir, if I can get you to go to the podium, Red, that would be Red. great. Sure. Um, thanks for holding the meeting tonight. I appreciate it. Got a, my first question is, does the city of Warrington have an urban planner, somebody that looks at the long range? Is there an urban planner in the city of Warrington? We have the comprehensive plan. Yeah. Biden and Highway 47, is that down the road or is that even thought about in, by the city of Warrington? Or, I mean, with the, it's, the city's growing. And uh, is, is there a city planner or what do you? City planner? Yes. Uh, I'm the planning and development director. Okay. Uh, so I go off of the comprehensive plan and the city codes for projects that come in. When you say the comprehensive plan, what is that? Is that so that's a, a plan that looks at our zoning, um, the roadways, and everything for the current. And I think it's six years old now, uh -huh. and it looks at the future on on okay. things. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm just kind of my concerns are just where's the the city's taking in a lot of tax money. There's a lot of building going on out here. I'm sure it'll never be Wentzville, but I, I'm kind of curious on how what the city's looking at. Um, do they have tax increment financing out here as far as, uh, you know, bringing businesses into the, like in our development that's going to happen in front of us? There's, there's no TIF proposed on this project, but there are TIFs in, in the city okay. in different areas. Not specifically in ours. I mean, you're basically inviting people to come in, hey, and we're going to give you a, a, the tax break. Okay, thank you. So, um, hold on. Let me let me clarify something. You just said tax break. There's no tax break on. We're not giving a tax break on this project. Okay. Right. So so you get a business. The coffee house comes in and they pay their taxes from day one. Correct. They don't get a 
they don't get a, a break or anything like that. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, um, I, I, re I read the uh, some of the requirements here. Hopefully, we're not going to have warehouses or. I, do we only have the two items right now? The coffee house and the bar. Is that all that we propose? The properties, for, prob a lot of properties still for sale there. Correct. Right. Okay. So right now on this for this agenda, those are the only two items in that. At this point in time, at, that we know that's going to be developed in that area. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, has the city done a traffic study as far as uh, we we all have used Brunei Parkway to enter our subdivision? Correct. Has a, has the city done a traffic study with all this new? Not on Bruni, and we haven't yet. We've done traffic studies in other parts of the city where big subdivisions are going up, uh, big complexes, okay. but not in this area. <coughs> okay, well, and you understand that's really our only route into our subdivision there, and. Yeah, I understand. guess our homes are close to six years old, and that Brunei Parkway's already taken a beating. I don't know if you've been down that road, but uh, it's 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 getting torn up. Um, uh, another concern is, you know, how how big this area gets. You know, our homes are down. We come down, we you, and we break off down there at a stop sign, and we've got a lot of little kids in the neighborhood. Right. And 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 as as this area gets developed, depending on what they have, I'm sure that we're going to see more traffic down in our subdivision for people looking to get out or whatever. And I think I, you know, a traffic study would probably be a pretty good idea. I don't know if you've ever been down Brunei Parkway. It's a two-lane road. Yes, I have. And it's okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Is there a chance to get a uh, traffic study done while all before all this development happens or? For just the traffic on on Bruni, yes. Oh, I can check into that. And okay, thank you. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, I'm, there's a lot of kids in our neighborhood. Um, now the east side of 47, you got a church there. You got an entrance into a uh, neighborhood. You got in the libraries down here directly across from us. But we have there's four or three driveways going into that. Um, and I think it was pretty tough getting out of my getting out on Brunei Parkway on the 47 tonight, you know, with people coming up from the south, and I don't, and uh, that's a concern. Uh, there's an egress cut in uh, off of 47, halfway between the property there. On the west side. On on our side, yes. yes. On the on the on the west side there. Um, Will they be using that? Will that be opening up? I mean, here the we got Bruni Parkway, which is the only way in. Right. I know that there's another entry on the far side off Warrior Avenue that, that as they come in behind that uh, gas station, it's it's all wide open. It looks like it's ready to, you know, be another access point to that uh, area from the gas station. Behind North. that, yes, yes, North. yes, 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 yes. We're yes. talking about the coffee shop here. That's huh? your five minutes. The coffee. Well, we're talking about oh, the coffee shop, minutes. but the the property, you know, access into that su our subdivision. You know, I mean, we got Brunei Parkway. You know, is there going to be a cut put in on Forty Seven in between Brunei Parkway and Warrior Avenue, so that when, you know, that's going to relieve some of the traffic getting out from Brunei Parkway onto Forty Seven. You follow me? Yes, there will be one uh, directly across from Whispering Primes. But not for this coffee shop. But not for the coffee no, shop. No, no, I understand yeah. that. I understand that. But there is going to be other accesses into the uh, the, the, the development that they yes. have. Okay. All right. Mr. Marcor, is that your five minutes, sir? Sorry. You have a five Wait minute me. limit. Yeah. Can you need back to finish up, up later? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, no Mr. Corman, did you want to step forward? Sorry, I was a little late. Um, for the record, Bart Corman, Lewis and Beatty. Also have with me uh, Sarah Button with Shield Made, Made in Coffee Company. Um, proposing uh, a coffee coffee shop on 1.22 acres um, just behind what was Crider Center. Um, I mean, it's changed some names a couple times since then. Right there on Bruni Parkway, Way, uh, which is, um, so this is a lot. That is part of Bruni Business Park. If you guys remember the history, uh, this was a planned business park um, for the whole thing, and then the backside changed to 
residential uh, because because the market for commercial there at that time uh, was limited so that's what happened but um, since then obviously we're doing more business down in the south side of town so anyway we got about um, 3400 square feet coffee shop um, 34 parking stalls uh, loops around has good traffic within within the site one access to bruni parkway or bruni Biz, bruni parkway um, uh, has the landscaping requirements uh, dumpster enclosure uh, the whole works also has a little tea garden patio area and stuff like that and uh, I'll take any questions anybody may have and I'll try to answer any questions uh, from the public if if the questions arise and you ask me to come back up okay. anyone have questions right now thanks Thank Mr. You. Corbin anyone else want to speak on the shield maiden coffee house site plan just step up. Come on, step forward. State your name. Hello. My name is Alexander Francis. I'm uh, part of the HOA for Forest Ridge Subdivision. I just had a couple quick questions. Nothing crazy. I, like, I'm all for businesses coming into the south side of Warrington. Um, but the only questions that I have kind of steer back to similar questions. Because I know with these two businesses, the coffee house and then on the other side, they're talking about the uh, bar and grill. You know, I know they were talking about the lighting exposure back, you know, being a nuisance to the neighbors. But the other question I had to rebuttal off that was, is there a plan to put up some fencing or something to kind of separate the two areas? So that way, you know, because people have <coughs> privacy back there, right? Um, and kind of alleviate some of the noise that may be coming from those areas. Are you talking about north of Bruni Parkway or the bar and grill that's going on the south side? Probably the south side. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so that would be the other development. At this time, I'm I'm not sure if Bart can answer that question. I'll answer that in the next public hearing, if I'm not mistaken, is, is, is that, is, and I will address some of that at that time. Okay. So, yes, there's, there's two, two, Separate two projects side. close to each other, both in Bruni Business Park, yep. and uh, I will address them as, as they are in public hearing soon. Okay. The attorney's, uh, usual okay. And then, yeah, uh, just like other questions, you know, I know we're adding in going on to Bruni Parkway. Um, my only biggest concern is it's kind of hard to get in and out of there as it is. So I didn't know if there could be or if there was any potential plans with the traffic to talk about maybe putting in some stop signs there at that intersection of Bruni and maybe some sort of stoplight or something because it's really hard for us even just as a neighborhood to get in and out in the mornings um, with, with the current flow of traffic on 47. Um, and then also the biggest concern is are we, are we gonna make sure that nobody, if the parking gets overflowed in those areas that they're not gonna try to park on Bruni and, and block up that area? Because um, I know usually in the neighborhood people will try to park on a street and on, on a street like that it looks like a residential street even though it's built like a business complex so I didn't know if that was potentially in the plan but I know that was a part of the other conversation so okay thank you thank you somebody else had their hand that one step forward okay go ahead, go ahead step forward I'm sorry sir um, just real quick would you have a, a better map of where these two I know, I know we have two public hearings, but I can barely read this. I think this this says lot one. Is that what this says? Lot one B. It's lot one B. So I'm a little unfamiliar exactly where all this is on Bernie Park. Right here. All right, this is better. Thank you. Yeah, that's what the Okay. Anyone else like to ask questions or Smart Cars, you had one more question? Yes, I got I can't answer a few more. I mean, I uh, these are all pertinent to the. Uh, but let me have this gentleman step forward real quick. Uh, my name is Scott Good, and I also live in the, the subdivision behind this this uh, uh, development. My question is is pretty basic: is is there going to be a certain setback away from the road that the building has to be? And what is that setback? That way, that way we know how far away from 
yeah, potential if you take a look at the there. site plan, it has all the distance exactly where the building, the this, parking lot, this here? that there okay. is the site plan for the project. Where is that available at? Well, so if you go online to our, our website and go under planning and development and active developments on the link, all these projects, all the reports, and the site plans are online. Okay, because I've seen I've seen a map similar to that, but you can't get it out far enough to tell. Once you get it out, so you can read it, you right. can't read anything. Yeah. Also, if you stop by one of those signs and uh, use the QR code, it'll take you right to the uh, the link on our webpage where all the reports and site plans are for the projects on this agenda. All right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. We'll close that public hearing and open up our next public hearing for the MK Ranch Longhorn Barn Grill Conditional Use and Site Plan. Uh, Mr. Burks. Hey, uh, the MK Ranch LLC has applied for a conditional use permit and a site plan approval for a 2.01 acre area of land on the west side of Highway 47 south of Bruni Parkway. Conditional use permit is request to allow a 3,600 uh, square foot restaurant bar grill. Uh, the C3 district defines bar, taverns, and nightclubs as a conditional use uh, in the Appendix A of the zoning code. The request has been submitted in conjunction with a preliminary and final record plat to subdivide the existing track into three smaller parcels. Uh, this project also is uh, consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, all codes and standards for uh, code standards for the conditional use permit and the site plan have been met for this project. Uh, staff has reviewed the proposed conditional use permit and site plan and found the proposal is consistent with Chapter 410 of the subdivision regulations of a warranted <coughs> municipal code. Further, the uh, proposed design furthers the goal of the comprehensive plan. And the only thing on that one was to uh, provide a stormwater management plan prior to land disturbance, verifying compliance with the city regulations. Um, Bart Carmen from Lewis and Beatty is also the engineer on this project. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Mr. Foreman. Thank you. And for the record, Bart Corman with Lewis and Beatty. Also have uh, Mike Ebersol with MK Ranch LLC, the applicant uh, for this. Uh, this is the conditional use for, for the bar and grill. Um, it is going to be located basically directly across the street from St. John's Lutheran Church. Um, we do have a measurement on the site plan showing that it's, the building is going to be 312 feet approximately away from the other build, from the church building. Um, in this, uh, there will be an access to Highway 47 uh, across from Whispering Pines Lane, where there is a small curb cut there now that MoDOT has determined is the place to be. Uh, that's the existing entrance uh, when MoDOT uh, left it, or probably back from the old Bruni Farm, is my guess. But anyway, um, so we talked to MoDOT, and they said we can widen that up to 60 feet. We're not quite doing it that wide. Um, and so then that access will be brought into the site. Also, we are proposing to um, connect up to the, the stub street behind the Fueler gas station, uh, which will, will create access to Warrior Avenue uh, so we can have good quality traffic flow throughout. This also site plan will also stub to that that stub further north into what will be the remainder of lot five uh, so that whenever the rest of lot five develops uh, it can connect up and have that connectivity all the way to Bruni Parkway uh, when the time comes and and that development occurs um, so this is just the conditional use site plan portion but to make all this happen I will will note that there is a preliminary plat and a final plat uh, that has to kind of go as a package deal so I think it's relative to talk about that in this public hearing um, so so lot five will be split up it'll still leave about 11 acres uh, on the north end of it that that abuts Bruni Parkway for development in the future uh, it'll have a the two acre uh, lot that the bar grill sit on and then in the back um, it'll have a 1.24 acre lot uh, that backs up to some of the residents uh, to the west and at this time uh, there's no plan for what's going on that lot so there is for now 
uh, there's uh, quite a bit of space buffering from that residential um, and for note that it is all zone commercial so um, we have uh, more than the minimum requirement of parking uh, on the site plan um, we do have a volleyball area and a covered patio and so we wanted to add additional parking for that um, to accommodate for that as well as there's really nothing else commercially around right now uh, so that we, we wanted to supply more parking here so nobody was parking at the church and walking across you know you know how that gets when, when you got cross access or just nearby parking that's great but when there is nothing uh, they didn't want to have it to where their customers couldn't have a place to park so so there's more than a minimum requirement of parking here um, also including all the landscape parking trees and, and foundation shrubs. And I'll take any questions anybody may have. I'm sure I'll have some more questions later, but while I'm thinking of it, did I read in here somewhere that the uh, the curb cut access off of 47, is that right in, right out only? It is not at this time. It is not. Uh, MoDOT did not put any restriction on that okay. at this time. Um, could that be the case? It could be, but uh, right now MoDOT did not put that on on our on our initial correspondence because it's not. I thought I had read that somewhere in the proposal. You did, John, and that was updated. Oh, that report okay. was updated. Okay. Yeah, Thank yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they looking to widen that road right there at all? Forty-seven. Yeah, because I mean we've been trying to get that. No. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. No. It, it widening forty-seven from. From from the Kroger or whatever, nothing there now. But uh, South has been on the uh, um, MoDOT advisory Radar. committee, the TAC committee, uh, for quite some time. Uh, but it never it never makes it high enough priority to get on the stip for funding. Uh, but but I know it gets it gets put on either sometimes just from downtown to Warrior. Sometimes it gets put on from downtown to Quarry, um, in my opinion, probably could go all the way to Quarry. Uh, if we could start now, by the time we'd get enough funding, it, it would definitely be due. But uh, that's the uh, TAC committee has had that on their list for quite some time, but it, it never gets enough votes and enough to get the funding to go for it. Thank you, Bart. Mr. Mark Horst, did you want you can, sure. you can speak on back on, you got five minutes on this. Back to the subdivision. Same, it's the same area there. I live back behind that retention pond back there on, I guess, on the northwest side. And I'm sure that the city <laughs> is going to have tie into their uh, their stormwater system, I guess. I won't see any more water coming in the retention pond due to this. I will or will not? Okay. Because there's going to be a lot of blacktop there and everything else like that. A lot of water runoff. And the retention pond has filled up before and basically overflowed. I'll just try and make this real quick. Uh, the properties that back up to these developments, are there going to be trees or something to, you know, separate, you know, sound barriers basically? Is that part of the, what you look for with the contractors or do they have the, they get to do what they want or sometimes you put up a fence and sometimes you put up trees to, uh, is there any plans for that in any of these uh, developments? So right now, these two projects don't back up. Right, right, right. I understand. Yeah. So we would have to wait to see what new businesses okay. will come in to fill those remaining when does lots. That, when does that part come up? When they start talking about protecting the citizens, you know, the, the subdivision owners, you know, as far as having, whether it might be trees or a fence to, so they're not looking out their backyard and looking at a building or whatever. I understand. When does that become a so issue? So when they, the applicant submits all the paperwork and then I start my review, so at that point. And you're the person that comes out there and says, hey, we need to do something for these guys? Well, that, I'm, the, I'm the person that makes sure that the project meets all the uh, city codes. Right. and regulations so is that considered is that considered something more than the city code if if to protect the homeowners that the developments backing up to is that is that, that's probably not included in there and and some of the city codes there depending on what's being built there is buffers that are required between commercial and the when it backs up to residential areas okay. all right but 
the storm water and all that, I don't have to worry about the retention pond filling up and it dumps into uh, Lake Binkley right there. And it, you know, I've, I've seen it get high, but I have seen it all the way up to the banks before. Is that water that's going to be this development, is that going out towards 47? So all the storm water, it, that uh, park there, uh, the stormwater retention was designed for that. So all the projects that come in are sent to an engineer and are checked for the, the runoff and the, check the requirements to see if everything's going to be within standards for that retention basin. So you're planning on that retention pond being the uh, the relief, I guess, for and the stormwater relief and then dumping into Lake Binkley then? Yes, it's okay, designed thank you. for that. All right, let me try and get through the last one here. Uh, uh, is it, and I, I, I looked at the code a little bit, you got retail, you got commercial, and you got manufacturing. Correct. Are we open to all that, at, uh, that plot of land there? So or? that is C3, that's highway commercial. Uh, most of your manufacturing is going to be in an industrial, okay. and it's not. Okay. So uh, also on the website is our Appendix A, and that has a list of all the, the um, uh, zoning and all, all the businesses. And if you, you can go across and see what's allowed in each zoning district, what will need um, a condition, conditional use or a site plan that's approved by planning and zoning and the board, or if it's permitted there, or if it's not allowed there at all. Okay, all right. Um, let's see, sorry, I'll be out of here in a second. Um, I guess that's really about it. Uh, um, hopefully I'll make the next meeting in that and we can kind of uh, we'll see where things are at. But right now that's the only developments we have in this. Uh, on, this, this on this agenda, yes. Okay. So, Thank you, and you can, always, you can always give me a call in the office sure. uh, if you have any other questions or I, stop by. I talked to you the other day. Yeah. Thank okay. you. And thank you all for thank you, doing Ms. what you do here. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Anyone else? To speak on the MK Ranch Longhorn Bar and Grill traditional uses and site play in public hearing. Hearing none, we'll close our public hearings for the night and open up our public comment section. <clears throat> our first public comment will be the resubdivision of Lot 5 Bruni Business Park and preliminary and final plat. Okay, so Mr. Corman has went over this. You want me to reread? That again? Mr. Corman has went, he went over all the, the items for the uh, preliminary and final. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll go over it again. Okay. Uh, the NK Ranch LLC has submitted an application for a preliminary slash final record plat for approval of the 14.29 acre area of land on the west side of Highway 47, south of Bruny Parkway. The preliminary plat is a request to subdivide the parcel into three lots, each complying with the zoning and subdivision requirements of the Warrington City Code. Uh, the preliminary plat is the first step in subdividing the property. The plan shows a preliminary design of three lots. Lot 5A is 11.04 acres. Lot 5B is 2.01 acres. And Lot 5C is 1.24 acres. Uh, plan shows easements requirements to provide municipal service to the lots and access in the future. The applicant has requested an expedited review with the preliminary plat and the final plat present uh, at the same time as permitted by uh, 410.210, number or letter C of the city code. Um, the uh, proposal creates three lots, which are served from Highway 47 and Bruni Parkway, and the proposed internal private access. The proposal access lot B and C will, will be provided from the shared access entrance from Highway 47. Uh, the preliminary uh, the preliminary shows. Stormwater indicates stormwater will be handled through the existing detention facility, and staff has reviewed the proposed preliminary and final record plat, and final proposal is consistent with Chapter 410 subdivision regulation of Warrington Municipal Code, and further proposed design furthers the goal of the comprehensive plan. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Anyone have any questions for Mr. Burks? <coughs> Any public comments on that? No? Okay. Next public comment will be the Woodland Heights final plat. Uh, 
Uh, Chris Wolf of Wonder Lake Survey and Engineering has submitted a final slash record plat application on behalf of Ed Schmeltz for a 51.3 acre tract of land on the east side of Highway AA North north of the North Service Road. The request is to establish 108 single family resident lots associated with infrastructure to support the development. The final slash record plat is consistent with the preliminary plat previous, previously approved for the subject site by the City of Warrington Board of Aldermen on May 16th, 2023 with bill number 36-23. Um, the analysis, sidewalks are included on one side of all the proposed streets and located within the proposed right of ways. Uh, the plan indicates two um, areas to ins installing uh, mailboxes. Um, I think one's going to, the first location is going to be on Shallow Water Road off of Highway AA. And in the northern, in the northern part of the subdivision, the second mailbox location is on Shallow uh, Water Road at Wildflower Valley Court in the center of the subdivision. Maintenance of this area will be the responsibility of the Homeowners Association. Um, for uh, approval of the final plat, completion of escrow will be required and the staff has reviewed the proposed final re record plat and found the proposal is consistent with Chapter 410 of Subdivision Regulation of Warrant Municipal Code and it furthers the proposed design of the residential subdivision, furthers the goal of the comprehensive plan. Um, Chris is here, the engineer, along with Ed, the applicant, if you have any questions. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Thanks so at this time. Anyone else want to take time to make a public comment at this time? Yes, uh, Chris Wolf with Wonder Lake Surveying and Engineering. Um, I'm here. Uh, also, Ed Schmelz, the developers here. Uh, we went through the preliminary plat process previously. Uh, and we addressed all the comments at that time. Since that time, uh, we have submitted a full set of engineering plans for this development, uh, submitted those to the city. The city's reviewed them and their engineers reviewed them and we got uh, approval of the construction plans. So the next step for us is the final planning process, which creates the lots. Uh, so that's where we're at and that's what we're asking for tonight. Um, I will just bring up a few things that happened from the last preliminary plat. Um, so things that are a little bit different with this development, uh, the mailboxing situation, it was going to be between Wright City and Warrington. So this development actually is all in Warrington. Uh, so every address is Warrington and not Wright City. So that was an adjustment that was made uh, between the two postmasters to actually make this all in Warrington because it was supposed to be partially Wright City, partially Warrington. So. Uh, the other thing was we were dealing with the water district number two for this development. Part of it was in Warrington, city of Warrington. Part of it was in public water district. So uh, the water district actually relinquished their rights to their property, which they supposedly have never done before, uh, just for this development uh, because the city was more able to serve it. So all the water usage and water meters and all those water services will be city of Warrington. Um, as far as the mailboxing locations, when we first came with the preliminary plat, we had a mailbox location closer to AA as our only option. Uh, but what we did was we left that one there, but we put another mailbox location for these single families uh, basically midway into the subdivision. So we do have two to split up the traffic flow. So those are just kind of a few things. If you guys got any other questions, I'll try to answer them. Anyone have questions this time? Where is the mailbox location? Uh, you won't see it on the final plat. It's actually on the full set of construction plans. Um, but uh, for reference, uh, if you pull it up, there's one on lot 35 there uh, at the south corner of lot 35. And then if you scroll through, uh, there's going to be one in the common ground just north of lot uh, 75. So you see that 75? There's a strip right there uh, that's common ground. There'll be mailboxes there, off to the side, across from um, the uh, wildflower view there. Sorry, Arrowhead Lane there. So, that's where the two are. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments on the Woodland Heights final plat? Hearing none, we'll 
close that public comment section and open up our regular planning and zoning meeting. And the first order of business will be the minutes from the January 4th, 2024 meeting. Make a motion to approve the minutes from the January meeting is submitted. Second. Motion by Mr. Costello, seconded by Mr. Cornell to approve the minutes as submitted. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mrs. Kelly Madden? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Durbin is absent. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Priest is absent. Mr. Dieterman? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Mrs. Cheryl Cullum? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0 with two absents. First order of business will be the amendment to section 405.390 site plan process. Did you have any questions on, on that? I did, actually. <laughs> um, we are removing some fee. How does that? We're, we're removing the public hearing requirement for the site plan process along with the, the uh, so would be the deposit for that. The, there was a, there's usually a hundred, $200 uh, deposit that's required for right. the public hearing. But yeah. it's so, still, it doesn't change the process of what we're doing now. No, not so the, the reason that that $200 fee was required was when the site plan had a public hearing associated with it for the public uh, notice portion of it. And since there's no public hearing, there's no more need for the notice. So that's why that fee is being taken. Uh, got it. Okay. Right. Thank you. I guess my question would be what prompted this and why? I, I, I'm a little bit confused. So we're not going to hold a public hearing on the site plans, correct? Correct. I, what prompted the, the, the change here? Why, what's the reason for the change? Uh, well, so the public hearing is not for site plans is not required by statute. So it was a, an additional requirement that the city imposed on itself. And we, the city just wanted to remove that requirement because it's not needed per, based on the statutes. So my only concern, and, and I appreciate that it's not required by statute, my only concern is does it eliminate some, some transparency and some public notification that something may be coming into their uh, neighborhood that, that may be of interest to them? Still on all the projects, the notification is still mailed out. Okay. Even on projects that are not public hearings just See, not the publishing in the newspaper. In the yes. Thank you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. Any questions? I'd like to make a motion to approve the amendment to section 405 uh, site plan process as written and discussed. Second that. Motion by Mr. Cullum, second by Mr. Cooper to approve the amendment to section 405.390 site plan process as discussed. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Ms. Cheryl Cullum? Yes. Ms. Kelly Madden? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Dieterman? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0 with 2 absent. Next order of business will be the Shield Maiden Coffee House site plan. Do you have any questions for me? I had some questions for the developer. Um, let me go back to it. I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. Can we get the um, the plan? I know you mentioned the, the I wanted to ask about the parking. Um, where is it? There it is right there for you now. Okay. So how many parkings does it have? I believe it's got 30, 34. <laughs> got 34 total spaces. And then what's the capacity of the, of the thing? So on the first floor, we have uh, about a little under 3,400 square feet. So the parking requirement is uh, one per 100 square feet of floor space so that's where we get the 34 parkings there is a basement but it's for storage only because obviously 
you wouldn't meet ADA or anything like that. So it's just for for inventory. Um, so that's that's how you, we use the parking calculation per code of one <coughs> one space per 100 square feet of building space. And then this has a drive-through, correct? That is correct. Uh, where is the thing? This is the one I had a hard time looking at. Um, where was it going to exit? So the, so the drive-through circles around standard counterclockwise um, and then exits back into the parking facility and then exits uh, the, the one and only access on the Bruni Parkway. So it's, it's not like there's two drives, there's not an in and an out, there's just one there um, that's, that's set up for two-way traffic. Okay, because okay. what I was, I was, I'm asking because I'm trying to have a visual of where the traffic flow, if you have people that are going in the coffee shop, parking, you know, on the side and where did it go now? You, I, Again. Oh, there it is. Um, how would that like impact the? You know what I mean? Like where where the flow of traffic's going, and then you have more more parks car trying to get in and out. Um, is what I was trying to figure out how what that might have looked like. Sure. Yeah. Um, we have two-way traffic, so anybody that parks and to go inside. We'll do it. Most of the parking is all on the right side. Um, we only have a couple handicaps and a couple spaces on the left side towards the building. Um, uh, mainly, mainly for space. Um, that's that's why we did that. Uh, so it kind of not like that's a great example, but it, it's almost like Taco Bell. If you if you know how Taco Bell is, you you, you park pretty much all on one yeah. side. Um, fortunately, yeah. our exit like is going to be better than Taco Bell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, we're, and we're perpendicular to Bernie Parkway, so I want to I want to clarify that it, it will be better than Taco Bell, but but uh, and that's why and we got it set up with the drive-through. I have nine cars shown, but you can actually stack ten there uh, if you wanted to. So so the drive-through should not come into the parking areas, um, and if there is ten cars backed up, then I think. Sarah will be very happy that she's got that many customers <laughs> at once, but hopefully she can crank out some coffee pretty quick. Um, so, so we did not do like a, a double stack or anything like that, like some other coffee places, because we just we use the length of the property to, to utilize that. Okay. Um, and then is it is it so some is it a cafe? So some coffee shop can do like meat food, right? Like like. They yeah, yeah, you're gonna have pastries, sandwiches, stuff like, like that. that. I yeah. I hear that uh, she's got a family member that makes some killer pies. I haven't had one at the office yet, but we need some samples. May, may, maybe before the project's over, I'll get one. Uh, okay. So, but yeah, so there obviously there yeah there'll be some some food items there. Okay, yeah. and so what's the hours of like operation? Um, is, is whatever at this point, probably. Like, what do you? Tentatively, we're looking at like 5 a.m. You need to come to up and talk yeah. in the microphone. Can you come up, please? Speak for the record, your name and your address. Uh, my, name is my name is Sarah Bunton. And I live at uh, 1052 Mohican Court here in Warrington. Um, tentatively, uh, our hours are looking at 5 a.m. to about 6 p.m., so we won't be a late night. Okay. So it's within like school hours. It it will um, remain after open after school hours to give you know students that who drive a chance to come over, have some coffee and yes. pie, <laughs> which they would. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm. Does anybody else have a question? <laughs> I, I do. So I don't know if is this. I don't know if you have. Um, had other locations. I don't know what your experience here is uh, with this. My concern, of course, is we've got another coffee shop in town that sometimes creates a traffic hazard. It backs, the, the drive through backs up onto Highway 47, creates a little bit of congestion. This isn't as bad because it's off of Bruni Parkway. But I do think that in the morning hours, if you don't process, it, have have you put any thought to that your capacity to make sure this doesn't back up out onto Bruni Parkway? Sure. 
Yeah. Um, like I said, we have 10, 10 spaces without even impeding the in and out foot traffic parking. <coughs> and then you got uh, an easy 150, 160, 70 feet there of two-way traffic that could back up. So we could really back up a lot of cars on this site without impeding on the next one. I mean, you think about that, we're on 1.22 acres. I know there's another coffee shop in town that's not on near that, right. not, not anywhere close to that. Uh, but I don't want to mention any names. So, so we've, we've extended this, we've used the length of this property to our advantage for that, um, for a reason, but yet kept the building up forward but not too forward so that it still has visibility from 47. So I know in the public comments or hearing there was a question about how far off the road it is. It's, it's at least 40 foot off the right of way roughly, but for them to understand where that's at, uh, Kreider's uh, existing dumpster is about the, the same distance as where this okay. building is going to sit. That's so it, it's going to sit back a little bit. We, we had to, one for the pie shape, but then two to have the traffic generate within ourselves. Because um, we, we could have done two entrances, one in, one out, uh, and divided it, but we thought it would be better to have one single access on a Bruni. So. Thank you for putting thought into, into that issue. Thank you. I appreciate that. You guys got any questions? I'd like to make a motion to approve the Shield Maiden Coffee House site plan. Site plan 166 as displayed and discussed. I will second. second. Wait. We have a motion by Mr. Cullum, second by Mr. Costello to approve the Shield Maiden Coffee House site plan as submitted. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Mrs. Cullum? Yes. Ms. Madden? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Jason Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Dieterman? Yes. Motion passes eight to zero, and that'll come in front of the Board of Aldermen on. When is it next week? No, it'll no. be the second meeting, and it's the third Tuesday in June. I don't or, June, or February. I don't know what the date is. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mark, I, had a <laughs> I don't know what the date 20th. is. I think it's twentieth. There you go. Okay, thank you. I'm not ready for that yet. I gotta get past next Tuesday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Coming from February. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You. Mr. Coleman, now you have another four months to work on this. <laughs> <laughs> next order of business will be the resubdivision of Lot 5, Rooney Business Park, preliminary and final plat. Do you have any questions on that one? What are we. So no, we we're resubdividing because you're adding more. Well, sorry. Oh, I'll let Bart explain yeah, no. this one. Sure. So, so Bruni Business Park was had big lots because uh, didn't have exact plans on what's going there. Okay. Um, so, so lot five is fourteen acres and some change. Um, so we're just dividing this up three ways. Um, so we're leaving the the north part pretty much whole. Okay. Uh, we're creating lot 5B for the two acres for the bar and grill, and then lot 5C, uh, the 1.24 acres on the back side of that, um, just because of the natural um, design of the fueler's resubdivision, uh, we were, were basically forced to, to line that up, which, which is fine. Uh, it, it's good planning, uh, but that's what it is, so we couldn't really put a building all the way across that that strip there because obviously we'd have to keep that traffic to flow through so it, it created three natural lots we could have went with two lots and and l-shaped around but that's not what the real estate negotiations have done as well as it would naturally cuts up a nice little small lot there um, to do that so that's that's what we're doing is we're just creating three lots out of one and then the you said the the restaurant's going to be on 5a uh, the barn girl's gonna be on 5B. Oh, 5B. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
I'll make a motion that we recommend approval of the resubdivision of Lot 5 Bruny, Bruny Business Park preliminary and final plat, subdivision 120. I'll second that. We have a motion by Mr. Costello, second by Mr. Cooper to approve the resubdivision of Lot 5 Bruny Business Park preliminary and final plat. Any questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Dieterman? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Mrs. Cullum? Yes. Ms. Madden? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Jason Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. <coughs> and that will come from February 20th. Next order of business will be the MK Ranch Longhorn Barn Grill Conditional Use and Site Plan. Do you have any questions for me? I think they'll be for Mr. Corman when they're ready. Yeah. If not, I'll go sit back down, but I know if I go back there, then you're going to call me back up, so. You get your Wait, steps are we in. the restaurant now? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. I, I would, so, um, I've got some questions uh, along the lines of proposed business hours. Um, uh, I heard discussion. I, I didn't see on the plan. Oh, yeah, it is. There's the the volleyball. Um, Getting it back. Yeah. yeah. It's on the, that's between the, the between the structure and the uh, back of lot. Yep. Correct. Yes. Yep. And we still have space. If you look at that, we got one square for sand volleyball, and then we still have another kind of square green space there for, for now. Yeah. Yeah. In case in case it takes off, we can put another set of volleyballs there or, or something else. But we, we left that as, as green. Um, for for future expansion, hopefully we have good success and 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 need to come back here later to to add some volleyball or something. But uh, you What's know, the proposed lighting for the the volleyball. Uh, the lighting that'll be up to to Mike. Mike wants to come up and talk about it. I am Mike Ebersol, uh, two zero three nine eight Dry Fork Road, Warrington. lighting uh, I mean I can show you but I don't know how to so there will be uh, I guess almost poles uh, like you would see at a softball field something like that not quite that tall <coughs> uh, not quite that bright but uh, I we were planning on putting one at each at each of the four corners so there'd be four poles there with lighting on it and then what is the the hours? Uh, uh, we're anticipating 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. So I don't know that it necessarily speaks to your project as much as some of the work we've done in the past. Uh, I know that when the fueler went out, there was a lot of discussion about the hours and, and how that would impact. Um, I, again, I, I'm not saying necessarily that we need to hold you. It, it it just brings up the fact that we uh, we certainly held them to a set of standards that maybe we shouldn't have, or it, it's just not real consistent with this. But I know that that would be uh, a topic that would come up. Like, how would you solve? So, I have two questions. Uh, one with the parking, right? I know we you mentioned <coughs> one per. 100 square feet. 100, 100, 100 square feet. Oh. One for 100. So how many total does this have? <coughs> we, have we have 61 spaces provided, but it really only needs 36. Okay. So we're and then the other thing I was concerned about, so I understand it's like a bar and grill, so you're going to have like late hours, you know, and we have neighborhoods that are, it's, you know, would love quiet hours, right? And, you know, we can't really dictate how business is your hours, but we do want to understand how how we would address like noise, traffic, and this is kind of this is busy. I don't I mean I, don't get me wrong. I love restaurants and everything, but we we want to kind of think about you know all you know harmony in our residents within the community, right? So how would what what does that look like, or what would that look like? Am I you need to talk in the microphone. Oh my God! Hello. Okay. Hey, there you go. <laughs> so this thing was on mute. So I'm sorry. 
So what would you what do you mean what what would it look like in a, from a day to day operation? Yeah. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that would be more of my question. I, I I don't do the operations. I just do the site. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we have we have sufficient space between where the bar is and not only do we have space behind where the volleyball is going, but there's an access another access road in addition to another one point. Two five acres behind that. I think the space between the bar and the the residence is, I would assume, is quite sufficient to mitigate any noise. Okay. And then the other question would be, is this the one that has? Where I've seen this in other area. I'm not saying that this could happen here, but I've seen this in some other area where you have restaurants and it's you, like Bruin Parkways right there, and overflow sometimes they park on the street you know, and then that becomes a problem. Um, obviously, you try to address that with enough parking, right? Um, but do you, is, like, do you plan on hosting huge events kind of like that would exceed potentially your parking space? Only if you let me. <laughs> <laughs> Not at this time, we don't, no. Well, it requires a permit, by the way, it's, the city's right there. <laughs> Okay. There, there is, there's still green space if you need Correct. green space. Perfect. <clears throat> yeah, as, as I look at the sub, resubdivision, so that, that westernmost lot is about 270 feet, and then you've got 50 feet of road, and so you're talking over a football field in between where the sand volleyball right. would end and the, the, prop, the closest residential property line. Yeah, yeah, and so... You know, can't can't really bind what's going to happen on four B to five or five right, B right, to five right, C. Right. But you know, right now the negotiations five C will also be owned by by Longhorn Ranch or MK Ranch LLC. So if there would be a large event, they could park in the grass for one day, kind of like you mm -hmm. park at the fairgrounds for for that yeah. week, mm -hmm. that type of situation. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful on some of our codes on parking in the grass. You know, um, but you know uh, that could be an option if if there was huge events that that required that. Um, but I, we're planning on this and got to get get started on this. And yeah. If we can fill 61 spaces, I think we're going to be doing pretty good. <laughs> and then, do you just so I I, I understand? I remember we, there's two ways to get in and out. Correct? Okay. I couldn't remember if this is the one that had the MoDOT issue or... Yes, and, and, and for the record even, if you want, because this board hopefully will remember that in the future, uh, we're even proposing uh, the access parking lot drive aisle that's in front of the building to stub south to that empty lot yes. between there and the fueler. Okay. So, um, so sometimes when you get in these commercial sites, you want them to tie into each other. Um, especially, we don't want any more traffic to go on to 47 if they're going to go next door to, I don't know, um, you know, an office or an insurance agency or whatever that would fall between there and the fueler, and then to the fueler. So, uh, so then, you know, in theory, there could be an agreement for that to connect up. So then there would actually be two connections, north and south. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm not so sure that I would necessarily propose it as a condition, but I, I would say that it would be nice to see maybe a row of plantings either on the western uh, edge of 5B or if he owns 5C on the western edge of 5C to offer some light. And I, would, I would anticipate that, again, I don't know how to point to where I'm talking, you know, but the green space that we have behind the... Uh, behind the volleyball. Uh -huh. I, I would anticipate that there will be some type of trees or brush or, or some type of structure like that uh, that will separate the two lots. I think, you're, I think your neighbors would yeah. feel good about I would, that. I would anticipate. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask the commission, you know, since you're talking about hours of operation going till 1 a.m. and, you know, there are other establishments in the city that operate to that hour and the code allows it for uh, bar restaurant occupancies. Um, does the commission feel like it might be appropriate to put some condition on how late the volleyball portion should operate? Because that, that to me, is where the I think the greater 
yeah the, the greater point. nuisance if you know that's the, right. the word uh, to the neighbors is is going to come from uh, a possibly you know because people are playing a sport and you know yelling and whatever uh, but I think more directly even outside from the noise the the uh, the light issue um, you know I, I think and mr. Burks you might be able to shed some light on this light question, but um, I think most of the developments that we have that go in the community now, commercial developments, <clears throat> the outdoor lighting, the parking lot lighting, and things of that nature, there are some requirements that the light be directed downward and not um, pollute upward, if you will. Um, and I don't know for sporting event type facilities like this, if there's a way to have uh, to, to use lights that direct the light. Obviously, the, you need the light down where the game's going on anyway. Right. Um, but I, I think if, if the lighting minimized the amount of diffraction or whatever your, the correct term for that is, so that it's not disturbing the neighbors, I think that's a good thing. Is it, is it, do we have something like that in our... Um I'll have to check on that. Okay, I, so I we, can, can we add it as a condition to... And then the other question I would have is the volleyball hours, is that something that we can put on the condition? Well, that's the... Yeah, to I'm me, that's the, the more important one. Lawyer um, here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the scared, the lawyer. hours, it could be recommended as a condition in your report to the board. Um, in terms of the lighting, the code likely covers that. Okay. And the compliance with the code would be... The, the condition. So and can that, we can that, we check it before the? Next? That may be. We've yet to ask the requester. I mean, you've given us the general hours, mm -hmm. but we haven't. We've yet to ask. Do you have a plan for the volleyball and the outdoor sports activity hours of operation? Yeah. No, not at this time. We're looking into having leagues uh, on certain days of the week, but we have not established what those leagues. Okay, so I think we can probably have a discussion about what's reasonable right now. Okay. Um, so we can put it in the condition for recommendation. Does anybody have any? I mean, what? I've, I've not done any leagues, especially volleyball. I know some cities have it. So I know typical leagues would, would start uh, 5, 6 p.m. and usually ending by 11. Yeah. That would be. Yeah. Okay, so what? how do we feel about that? Would how, what would you think if, if one of the conditions was that uh, the outdoor activities ceased at, at 10 yeah. or 11 p.m. Yeah. during the week and maybe extended hours on Weekend. Friday and Saturday night? I think if we could go till 11 p.m. <clears throat> and then till 12 on the weekends. Yeah, I think if you look at other cities that do I'm just have afraid that, that we may the... have games starting at 9:30 yeah. or something and right. you know you just can't yeah, anticipate yeah. what goes on yeah. that's the only re I don't I wouldn't anticipate us going till 11 but I would hate for us to right. have to quit a game right. you know right but I wouldn't anticipate it being yeah. a regular thing I think 11 meets what you're going to find in other cities you're going to find in O'Fallon the places and other mm -hmm. other cities that I've been in in other states most of the time that outdoor area is closed by 10 or 11 at night so yeah. if that's already your comparable time for 11 because you talk about the leagues and you're totally right that they'll start at 5 36 o'clock people are off get something to eat and then they go and they do their leagues a few hours and they're gone mm -hmm. but normally they're closed down by 11 so okay. well, and I know at least the one in O'Fallon I, I think we're thinking of the same one it's not really in a residential it's not close to anything it's residential no it's not um, <clears throat> And, uh, you know, that's my only real concern. You know, if this were um, at the outlet center or uh, in a, you know, an area that's not quite as in close proximity, I think having it go almost as long as the hours of operation of the regular restaurant would be fine. Um, but I think if I lived in the neighborhood and it was going much, uh, especially on weeknights, and I'm assuming... Winter time, it's probably not going to operate at all. Right, right. 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 Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. This um, week we would not be out there. Uh, you know, but um, and in the as we get into daylight savings, you know, which is only a month and a half away, and we get daylight longer, you know, we've got, I guess, 
you'd still be running the lights, but you've got a little bit of daytime glow still sometimes at nine o'clock in the middle of the summer. So, so uh, this is this is sand volleyball. This is probably only from about May till October. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's about it. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the right answer is. I, I think it's reasonable. Um, if I'm a if I'm a homeowner nearby, I think it's reasonable to hope that uh, uh, ten o'clock on weeknights and you know eleven on weekends. eleven on weekends is is uh, I think it's a reasonable condition. Um, and the board of aldermen, of course, would have to ultimately um, weigh the question as well. Right. Um, but those are kind of the hours that I would be comfortable with supporting. Thank you. Any other questions? Question back? I would agree. Thank you. Ten and eleven. Okay, so you want me to word this? Are there any yeah. other questions? Any yeah. questions? You got more no, questions? I was going to ask you to word it because <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have more, more Do we conditions have any more questions, questions? and conditions? I don't think we have any more conditions. Anybody? Okay. Scott, you got some? I'll, no, I'll just I'll make a motion I, to... Excuse me, Commissioner, can you do separate motions, one for this conditional use permit and one for the site plan? Okay. So yeah. do the motion right. vote, do the motion vote. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, and the conditional use is first on the agenda, so I guess right. I'll make a motion <laughs> that we recommend approval of the MK Ranch Longhorn Bar and Grill conditional use. Uh, CUP 93 with the condition that hours of operation for the outdoor sports and volleyball uh, be restricted to no later than 10 p.m. on weeknights and 11 p.m. on weekends. Can I clarify what is a weeknight and what is a weekend? Yeah, Friday's a weekend. Friday night. Thank Friday you. night. It's a weekend. Friday night and Saturday night. Yeah, right. Friday night and Saturday night. And then Sunday, so, to, Sunday Thursday. to Thursday. We would school, just to yeah, basically yeah. school that keeps everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sunday to Thursday would be 10 p.m. Yeah. and, and yeah. Um, right. No. Thank you. Friday, Saturday is 11. I'll second. <laughs> Wait, who second? Jason. Jason. Cullum. Mr. Cullum. We got a motion by Mr. Costello. A second by Mr. Cullum. Is that the only? That's the only condition I the only condition that we had I'm concerned about. Okay. To put the time restraint on ten o'clock during the weekday, eleven on the weekends. Uh -huh. Any other questions or comments at this time? Roll call vote. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Peterman? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Mr. Cheryl Cullum? Yes. Ms. Kelly Madden? Yep. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Motion passes eight to zero. Now we'll ex entertain a motion for the Site plan. I'd like to make a motion for the MK Ranch Longhorn Bar and Grill site plan SP 167 to be approved as displayed and discussed. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Collum, second by Mr. Cornell to approve the MK Ranch Longhorn Bar and Grill site plan 167. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Dieterman? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Cheryl Cullum? Yes. Ms. Kelly Madden? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. James Cullum? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Next order of business will be the Woodland Heights Final Plat Subdivision 121. Do you have any questions for me? Do I have any questions for Mr. Burks? One. Yep, go ahead. For the, this is the Woodland now, right? Yeah. When when are you planning to break to start like going like a day? <laughs> I'd say uh, as soon as possible. So as soon as we get approval, uh, we just have to put up uh, uh, the bond letter of credit and we'll be ready to go. Okay. And then I know you mentioned already the mailbox, which we talked about last time, which was great. Thank you very much. Um, and they're all in Warrington. And then I just want to clarify. The maintenance of that is it through the HOA, correct? Maintenance of the common ground yeah. is uh, through the HOA. Okay. The, the roads and the utilities are warranted. Okay. warranted. I do appreciate the work that you've done for somebody who lived on South Spady Road growing up who had to have a P.O. box, so I was still a warranted address and nothing. <laughs> uh, am, I, am I missing something here? Was When you all first came, has the... Has the has the 
entrance point off of double A changed? Or was that always where? I thought it was- From the very beginning, it has changed. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, so basically at the very beginning, it was down towards where the existing gravel uh, access yeah. is now. Yeah. Uh, in order to get better sight distance, we ended up cutting that hill down and pushing that uh, farther up the hill. So we get a bigger, better sight distance there. Thank you, I appreciate that. It was a little bit hard mm -hmm. to track. This thing is so yeah. sprawling to, to scroll through. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's a, yeah. it's a big project, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, I was also, not that I'm an old board guy who drives around town all the time, but I was shocked to see how many of the apartment buildings are already built waiting for the road to go in, so. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Thank any, you, sir. Any other questions? You guys got any questions? Yeah, I, I, the only thing was just a statement. I, I did want to thank you because that makes it easier working with the water and others so that yes. I'm not right across the street from my neighbor and they're like, well, I had a water problem and I called Warrington. Well, here's the number. No, wait, you're right city. No, you're here. So I'm sure the people who are going to purchase them will appreciate it. Yes. Not every developer also always... So much effort into meeting what our our suggestions or what we'd like right. to see. So yeah. to come back and have met all of those <laughs> suggestions. Is, uh, I make a motion to approve the final plat submission as submitted. What is this one? Okay. Uh, Woodland Heights. Woodland Heights subdivision 121 final final plat. I second it. Motion by Ms. McCollum, second by Ms. Madden to approve the Woodland Heights Final Plat Subdivision 121. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Jason Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Dieterman? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Cheryl Cullum? Yes. Ms. Kelly Madden? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. All that will come in front of the board on February 20th. We'll uh, close our meeting and turn it over to Mr. Burks. So we will have a meeting for. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.